What I have here is a propane gauge that's being remotely read and displayed in Home Assistant. I'll explain how it works in a minute, but check this out. So this gauge reads about 46, 47, um, and so does the Home Assistant dashboard. What's happening is this Espressif uh, ESP32 board, this is a V4 development board, um, is, <clears throat> you can see there are really just three wires coming out of it. The red one, of course, is power. That's 3.3 volts. The black is ground. And the yellow is the resistance level. <clears throat> it's a uh, variable resistor called a Hall effect sensor that all it's doing is interpreting magnetic value. And that's how these safe propane tank uh, gauges work. You know, in a propane tank, of course, there's no through hole. I always kind of wondered how on earth do these things actually work? Well, it turns out there's a rod inside the propane tank <clears throat> and depending upon the, the fill level, um, the rod is gonna twist and turn and that in turn has a magnet on the end of it. And in this case, I'm just using a cabinet magnet here, but you can see that if I put the magnet under the gauge and I swivel it around, it's gonna, it's gonna move that gauge to a different position. And just to prove for a minute that the software is hopefully working, um, that's reading what, about 35 or so right now? Um, Okay, let's take a look at the code. Um, and first, let's see if uh, the serial monitor is gonna report. Yep, it's waking up. So it wakes up, it connects to Wi-Fi, it reads the values a hundred times. Um, it gets some kind of uh, info between, turns out about 1200 and about 3200, I think. Um, that represents the resistance level, the magnetic position of the valve. Um, and then it uh, goes to an interpolated value, which is the percent uh, reading on the tank. And then it sends it to MQTT, and then it goes to sleep for 60 seconds. Um, that's how the code works. Let's walk through it. Um, I include the Wi-Fi library and the MQTT pub sub client uh, library. I also have a file with home secrets, which basically just uh, provides Wi-Fi passwords and locations of the MQTT broker and so on. I'm declaring uh, a channel, two channels actually, uh, two topics, sorry, in MQTT. Uh, one is propane slash one slash percentage. Another one's propane one voltage. Uh, and there's also an input topic that the ESP32 board can receive messages. I'm not currently doing doing anything with that yet, uh, but I left that there for future development or if I develop other sensors based on this code. Um, then of course I need the login info for the MQTT broker, which lives on the same Raspberry Pi that powers Home Assistant. Uh, and uh, it, it just sits there and listens um, and it's MQTT is a really pretty amazing uh, and super useful thing to have running on your home assistant instance. Then uh, I declare uh, what GPIO pin I'm using. I did actually run into the conflict uh, between ADC, the analog to digital converter. Um, the e ESP32 boards have several different pins, several different GPIO pins, and it's actually got two analog to digital converter uh, processors on board. And uh, it turns out that if you use any of the ones that are part of the ADC1 family, you're going to run into a conflict, at least for the version 4 boards. You'll run into a conflict where you can't do an analog read or the numbers that come back are sort of all haywire. And that's because the Wi-Fi code is using um, that analog to digital converter, I suppose, or it somehow interferes with it. Um, I found that uh, after some trial and error and after looking up some documentation, I did find that 
pin number 33 uh, was able to read things cleanly and still have Wi-Fi operating. Um, so the alternative, of course, if you can't uh, get around that problem is to um, read the values and then turn on Wi-Fi and MQTT and send them. Because the pattern that I'm using is wake up every N seconds. Um, currently it's, what, every 60 seconds and send a value. And you really don't need Wi-Fi during the time that you're reading the values. So here I'm setting, of course, the um, uh, uh, mu <laughs> to seconds factor a million, uh, which is really just uh, because when you say you want to go to sleep, uh, amazingly, the processor wants to know that number in, um, what is that, microseconds, I guess. Um, so anyway, you have to do a little quick math. The MQTT port, of course, the standard is 1883. Uh, and then I have a holding value that I'm going to use. I found that just taking one snapshot value from this resistor uh, isn't going to be stable enough. It sort of bounces around. And in order to kind of debounce that value, I read it 100 different times with a small delay in between. Uh, and then I take the average and I report that uh, value before going to sleep. Uh, then, of course, there's a client. There are clients for both Wi-Fi and uh, ES, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> clients for both Wi-Fi and MQTT uh, is what this is. Um, so uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, some high school algebra will tell you that uh, you can really uh, just use Y equals MX plus B as the formula. Uh, you take the low value of um, what your sensor reads for the zero uh, gauge level and then read what the 100 is. And I think mine ranged from, I don't know, 1280 to 2800. I don't remember. Uh, yeah, 1280. Anyway, and for a while I was using this linear formula. But then, you know, I, I found that uh, it really wasn't, it was accurate within 3 to 5% of what the gauge actually read. But because there's, uh, it's not a true linear function on that gauge, um, some of the numbers are much more widely separated than others, um, I, I ended up doing a lookup table. So I took a whole bunch of values. I actually looked up 100, 90 percent, 80 percent, 70, et cetera, and I saw what the voltage was reading. And uh, I created this table um, down below where it interpolates uh, the values, um, the voltage levels. Uh, and then I have a simple function that just says, hey, given a number coming in, uh, 2400 or whatever, what, what percentage uh, is that likely to be? And there are 100 numbers in this array right here. So you're, it's going to be reporting the number basically that uh, I was able to get uh, through sampling directly. Um, and as I say, if you, if you don't want to do that, um, a linear function works you know, reasonably well within about 5%. Uh, points. So um, going back up, basically the, the loop is, is pretty straightforward, so I'll go through it fairly quickly. You tell uh, the board which GPIO pin you want. You open up Wi-Fi. This is all standard. Uh, begin the Wi-Fi um, session. Um, then once you've got Wi-Fi confirmed, then you set up the PubSub uh, relationship, uh, which is here. Uh, then I've, I've decided to subscribe to an input topic, so the board is listening. It's not really doing anything um, with that, but you'll see in the callback function below, there's an opportunity to do something if you want. Right now, the board is only writing values out to MQTT. Um, now, uh, now that the Wi-Fi and MQTT clients are set up, uh, we're going to read values. And I decided to read 100 of them and then average them. Uh, with a very small delay in between, and I found that debounced the values pretty well. Um, then I divide them, uh, I get 100, and I get the average. Um, and then the average is going to be some number like 1,450 or whatever, which doesn't really correspond to an actual voltage. There's no simple math you can do to do that. So um, it really, what I care more about is the percentage value of, on the gauge, and that's what that interpolation kind of lookup uh, function is down below. Um, and then it blasts that out to uh, MQTT. And then, um, then that's pretty good. Then we basically just shut down. We go to go into sleep. We 
we wait a second or so for the MQTT broker to finish its work and then we disconnect from it and then we wait another second and we disconnect from Wi-Fi and then we say well, it's time to go to sleep uh, and go ahead and sleep start. And so you'll see that that uh, that basically in the serial monitor it gets reported out here. Um, let's go, let's see if we can uh, take a look at how these numbers then are displayed. So I use Home Assistant. Uh, I love it. Actually, it's very good. It runs on a Raspberry Pi. It's pretty inexpensive to set up. You probably need about $80 of hardware, the Raspberry Pi itself. Um, and then the software itself is free. Um, and there are various add-ons you can do, like remote logins and other things, which give them some revenue, uh, which is well-deserved. It's a great uh, product. It's really cool. Um, okay, so one of the things that what Home Assistant is able to do is present uh, values delivered over MQTT in a visual way. And you can see that this is now displaying uh, a nice gauge here. Here are the raw values. This is the simplest way to display the values. Um, and I'm going to, off camera here, I'm going to change the, uh, let me change the value to, I don't know, 14% or something. In a minute or so, when the, when the ESP board wakes up, it should be, I don't know, 15, 14, something like that. Reporting percent, 14%, somewhere around there when it wakes back up, 13%. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> you can see that that's running in the background. Um, Within Home Assistant, there's, uh, it operates with this uh, uh, thing called YAML, yet another markup language. Uh, and here's how you declare to, once you uh, go to Home Assistant, you install MQTT, which is running on that Raspberry Pi. Um, easy to set up. Um, there are various YouTube videos that you can watch that show you how to set up MQTT on your um, Raspberry Pi, so I won't go through that. Um, and then you add the integration, the MQTT integration. And then what I'm doing here is I'm declaring to Home Assistant how to listen uh, to the, the values that I'm blasting out from that ESP32. And these are user-defined. These are not. It needs to be MQTT and sensor, um, colon, and the indents matter because this is sort of a Pythonic way of describing um, the markup, the, the spacing and indentation matters. I'm creating a list of two different uh, sensors. The first is called propane underscore tank underscore one sensor voltage, and the other is propane tank one percentage. And all I'm doing is saying, hey, you know, Home Assistant, when a message comes in on either of these two topics, then present them, you know, extract the value out this way. Then once I do that, then I get uh, a an easy way, let's see if I can go to this dev dashboard side, then I get an easy way to present it. So I, I can go in and I say add a card and how did I do this? I went by entity and I can say, um, gee, what did I call that? Uh, voltage. Uh, actually what I want is percentage. Propane tank one percentage. You can see that actually is kind of handily showing how often it's sending. I unplugged the, the device overnight, so it's not actually, it wasn't reporting then. Um, so I'm going to choose that entity, and it's going to say I could present it to you in text, but I could actually choose a different card. And the one that I chose was this um, gauge card, I believe. I think there's a gauge card somewhere. I'm going to skip over that. Oh, gauge, sorry, right here. Okay, so, and then you can choose a theme. I don't have various themes installed. Um, I can, I want to display it with a needle and I can define what's called severity. So I can say, you know, the first 40% is fine, then start worrying when it gets to be 20. And it does this nice um, uh, yeah, display here. So um, then, so that's cool. Then what you can also do, which I think is going to be my next step, is you can have notifications happen when the values get below some level. Um, and Home Assistant, again, makes that super easy. I'm going to go in and delete this. But I'll leave that for another video. Um, 
but this kind of general pattern of using an ESP32 board uh, and sending values to MQTT and then rendering them on a Home Assistant dashboard is going to be really, really handy. Hope this is helpful.